What were your thoughts about the movie uh, when you were making it? And what are your thoughts now? Because it's it's a strange movie. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird movie in many senses. When Revenge of the Ninja came out and was a success among the audience and, and money-wise, financially, so the company wanted immediately to make a sequel. <laughs> they already had two. Let's make number three. So uh, the head of the company was uh, Menachem Golan. He was a director. He was the producer head of the company. For, he called me in and he said, okay, Sam, let's make another movie sequel. And for some reason, which I don't know until today, I never asked him, he didn't want Shokasugi to be the, the, the main hero of this movie, of the next movie. Uh, and and he, uh, maybe they had some problem. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. And uh, he, he, he turned to me, he said to me, why don't we make it a woman, a movie with a woman? Okay, it's okay with me. It's, uh, it's his movie. He's, he's uh, paying me money to direct the movie. It's his product, in a way. But also it was a good challenge. I said, okay, a woman is fine. And, and the movie moved away, straight away from martial art movie to other areas that you mentioned. And I'll tell you why it moved away from this, uh, uh, this area. When there was a script, uh, uh, we took the same writer, Jim Seal, and I worked with him and we wrote a script for a woman. But from the beginning, Shokasugi was still involved in making the movie. He was, uh, he was part, he was still working for company. But the only thing that Menachem Golan didn't want him to be the main character of the script, of the story. And he didn't like the idea, of course, that he's not the main character. But he felt that he did very well with the Revenge of the Ninja, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And when he heard this idea that a woman will be a ninja, the ninja, he, he didn't like it. He was actually very much against it. Uh, he was against it also in the level that she is the, the hero of the movie. And he said, a woman cannot carry a ninja movie. A woman cannot be a ninja. She doesn't have the physical power and, and the audience will not accept her, which he was right, by the way. And, and, and uh, he was against it very much, and he was objecting. And I was sitting with the writer, with Jim Seal, and how do we resolve the problem? What, what can we do that uh, Shokasugi will agree and he will come along and everything will be okay? And then we came up with the idea of the possession. The woman, uh, which eventually was uh, Lucinda Dickey, she is not really a ninja. And, and you know, by the way, there were in the mythology, in the Japanese mythology, there are women ninjas. There are. Uh, they are usually in groups. The, the little that I know about it, I don't know. Uh, and they appear as really evil women, the group of ninjas, and they do all kinds of things. So there are women ninjas in the mythology, in the Japanese mythology. And even in some Hong Kong movies, you will see a ninja woman. But... Uh, but not a, as a main hero in a movie, no. Uh, so we came up with this idea. We said, she's not really a ninja. She's not trained. She's possessed. There is a bad ninja. Shokasugi is going to be the good ninja. There is a bad ninja. And he dies right away in the beginning of the movie. And his spirit goes into, uh, into her. And now we enter the, the world of the movie, The Exorcist. She's possessed by ninja. She's not a ninja. And, and everything she's doing is with the power of the dead ninja. So Shokasugi, who is the good ninja, eventually is really fighting the bad ninja within the body of a woman. So this was good. This was okay. In his mind, Shokasugi mind, everybody mind, they agree. Now we already are moving away from traditional martial art movie. And because we were there already, so we needed an excuse. How come she has all this skill? Let's make her a dancer, a, a instructor of uh, aerobic dancing. So now we are going into the, the world of the movie Flashdance. So now we have Flashdance and we have uh, Exorcist. And there are a lot at the time also the movie Poltergeist came out. Toby Hooper directed. I love this movie. I, I, so it was influenced very much by Poltergeist. So new elements of Poltergeist into it. And then how this has became a, such a hybrid movie of different genres together. And we are working in the script. And sometimes when you work on the script, 
you don't feel that what you are doing. You don't you don't understand the mixture, the cooking that you are doing because we didn't have time. It's not a studio that you we write a script six months, seven months. We finish everything in two weeks, two three weeks. The script is ready. <laughs> let's go. Let's make it. So you don't have time to analyze what you've done, <laughs> what you've done. And and we went and we shot this movie. At the time, for me as a director, as, a, as somebody who has to solve so many problems in action movie, we, we don't have the time like in a regular drama to rehearse, to think, to take our time, to, to reflect on the script. We are working all the time in the filming 12 hours. Then I have to go and see, and see the dailies, see the material from yesterday, another two hours. Then then sit in the office, talk about tomorrow, another one hour. Usually it's 16 hour day for the director. We are busy, busy. And the challenge is fantastic. I have to, to, to work with all kinds of things, with possession, with flying sword, with the exorcism, with the, with the, the room is moving, with the sucking, you know, this poltergeist, sucking everything into the cabinet, uh, fight sequences, 